Thank you for clicking on this video and today what I'm going to share with you is how you're going to create a parallax effect on your Flutter portfolio website using Flutter Web. The definition of parallax means it's a difference in perceived position from one point to another. Think of it as when you are in the lift or elevator. Your vision is still or static and the lift or elevator is moving. And that's what we are going to replicate. An image that goes up when we scroll up and an image that appears when we scroll down. That's why parallax effect feels natural to us. This is what it looks like. We will have a column of images or widgets. And the first image that we are going to show to the users who are going to see our Flutter portfolio is our hero image which is in blue and then the green section is where we will explain our different projects or what service that we are providing for the visitors. So this is an example of what will happen if the visitor or user scrolls down. You can see that the blue section only scrolls up maybe one third of its height while the green section covers everything. So this is what happens in the side view. In order for you to have this effect, what widget do you think we need in order for them to stack them up? That's correct. You need a stack widget. And this is what it is going to look like in the side and front view if the user scrolls up. All right, let's get on with the code. All right, the first thing that we need to do is to create a very simple material app widget and we call it my portfolio. And then at the same time, let's use our home page widget as a stateful widget for our home route. And it contains a very simple container. Let's change this container to material so that we don't have any UI errors later on. The next thing that we need to do is to create a simple stack. Earlier on, I have already discussed that we need a stack in order for us to do this very simple parallax effect. So once we have created the stack, what we need to do is now to have our image or we call it the hero image. Hero image is usually an image that expands the whole width and height of the web browser. So I'm going to use this widget called fade in image dot memory network. If you have seen my previous videos, I usually use fade in image memory network. It is because it has a fade in animation after it loads my image so that the user does not have a slight shock when it sees the image finish loading. So for our placeholder, we will use this transparent image dependency. This is a package that only returns just one transparent image that is in the U integer 8 list format. So let's import it. And then the next thing is that we will have our image. I use memory network or an image that I can render from a URL rather than an asset because I don't want my web project to be very big and the hero image might take up a lot of space. And I've created a variable called K hero image, which is a constant because this does not change at all. And this K hero image has the word K over here. So this is just a convention to say that this variable can be used globally or in other files. So let's insert K hero image. The next thing that we need to do is to make this image the size of the web browser. So in order to do that, we need to use media queries. So I have created two variables called height and width and this is the height and width of the web browser that we got from the media query and let's insert it inside our 
image or fade in image so we have our height and then let's have our width okay the next thing is that we want our image to fit the whole width that we have instantiated so the thing about fit width is that it makes sure that the full width of the source or image is shown whether it overflows the target box vertically and let's now run our app all right so we have our image over here that expands the whole width and it is me just talking about animations this is not scrollable so what we need to do is to have a scrollable kind of widget for us to scroll up and down in order to do that let's create a single child scroll view and this single child scroll view has a child of a column and inside the column it has a bunch of children widgets and we are going to have a sized box of the browser height and the next thing is we want to have a container that has the same height width as our picture above to just represent the bottom section of our website and let's put in a color okay so this fit in image memory network for now will be static and this column of widgets is able to be scrolled so let's see what it looks like and you will see the fade in animation and now you can scroll up the blue container however the image remains static it doesn't respond according to our scroll position so how are we going to make the image scroll according to how we move our screen so there is this thing called scroll notification scroll notification is basically a widget that notifies their ancestors or the widgets about scrolling related changes so that means we can make use of this class or object for us to make our hero image move up while we scroll up so the scroll notification bubble up through the tree which means given a notification listener that is a widget that we're going to use that will receive notifications for all descendant or child scrollable widgets so the scrollable widgets that we have is this single child scroll view how do you know this is a, a scrollable widget if you just go through the documentation you could see that it is a stateless widget and if we scroll all the way down it returns a scrollable that's when you know that the single child scroll view is a scrollable any widget that is scrollable usually is a scrollable widget if that makes scrollable sense okay that was a bad joke so we can wrap this stack in a notification listener and let's have the type scroll notification the next thing is that we are going to use the parameter called on notification and this on notification it requires a boolean function either it will cancel the notification or continue to dispatch notifications to further ancestors so let's create a boolean function inside our home page widget so just in between these two curly brackets let's create a function let's call it update offset according to scroll and at the same time let's put in the type as boolean and inside this argument if we go back on top you could see that the on notification actually gives us the scroll notification so let's use that and insert it into our arguments with the name small letter as scroll notification so if we were to just print scroll notification dot matrix dot pixels what does this mean so scroll notification has a property called matrix which is a description of the scrollable contents of our viewport or you could say the scrolling mechanism and these pixels will give the current scroll position that we are in at the same time we need to return a boolean so we are returning true because we don't need the scroll notification to bubble up to any widgets so let's return true for now at the same time you can add a simple 
documentation that says returns true to cancel notification bubbling. So let's copy this and let's paste it over here. The only time that you can use a function without the square brackets and its arguments or parameters is that when you satisfy what the callback required. So the callback requires this boolean function with the scroll notification parameters. And from our function over here, you could see that it is a boolean function that takes in the scroll notification as an argument. So let's save this. Let's look into our debug console. And if we were to scroll just like that, you could see that our scroll notification starts from zero and it increases accordingly. So we can make use of this in order for us to move our image. How are we going to do that? So we are going to make use of this widget called position. We are going to make use of this widget called positioned. So let's wrap our fade in image with this positioned widget. And this position widget basically helps us to control where our widget is inside the stack. So specifically say stack. So position is very good to use in a stack. The next thing is that we can control the different direction we want it to move. So we can make use of this top. And because we are changing the top, for example, if we put a negative 10, this will make our fade in image move slightly to the top. How do you know it's slightly to the top? As you can see from the bottom, there is this white space. Let's make it obvious and put a hundred. And now you could see it's moving to the top. So we know that by having a negative number for the top, how are you going to make that smooth animation is to make use of the scroll pixels that we have here. So you know that we are updating offset. So we need to create a variable called an offset. So you can put your offset over here as a double and let's start at zero. The next thing that you need to do is to set our offset into our scroll notification position. So you can type in offset is equal to this. However, we are inside this stateful widget. So in order for us to change our state, we need this function called set state. So we can type in set state and then we can move this in. If there is only just one line of code, and if it's not a very long line of code, we can change this into an expression body or arrow function. And with this offset, we can then make use of the position. So how are we going to do that? Well, you can just use a multiplication with the offset itself. So if you save this, and now if we drag or even scroll up, you could see that our image is scrolling up as well. Congratulations, we have created our simple parallax effect. Now, one thing that I don't like this scroll glow because if a user use the mouse to scroll the app, you could see that this scroll glow looks a bit ugly. So how do we remove that? So there is a stack overflow that has the answer to this. How to remove scroll glow in this scrollable widgets. So what this means is that the default scroll behavior has this glowing over scroll indicator. So what we need to do is to create our own scroll behavior that just return us an empty scroll behavior. This will remove the glow effect entirely. And in order for us to pass in this new behavior, we need to use this widget called scroll configuration. So let's copy this whole thing and let's paste it at the bottom and let's change this my behavior into no scroll glow and clean this up a bit. All right. At the same time, we need to wrap our widget in a scroll configuration. So we can do that above our stack widget. So we type in scroll config and then we need a behavior and let's put it no scroll glow and let's save this. All right, so if we just drag it down, there is no scroll glow. And if we do that, the same with this blue color, there's no scroll glow. So it looks like an actual website. Okay, lastly, you can now put in your name and a description on what you do. Okay, sometimes when you update, it is still syncing files to device, which gets stuck. So just FYI, what you can do is to just restart the app. So in the meantime, I can explain to you what I did. So 
for my text, I'll put in my name and also what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to prove learning coding is easy. So I'm going to position my column of text the same as what I have done for the hero image, which is over here. One thing to take note is that that is good enough that you don't have to put the 0 0.25. And then this means that if we were to scroll up, then we are able to make the text disappear when we scroll. So if you were to move out, you could see that our text will just disappear, which is what we want. Then at the same time, I created a sized box because I want to use this alignment, meaning that this size box, it is just a big container. And inside this big container, I can use this align. The difference between alignment and positioned is that alignment use X and Y axis over here. So your origin starts from the middle, which is over here, rather than the top left. So it depends on what kind of positions or direction you want. So for me, I want alignment. And alignment 0, 0 means middle. So if I want to make the alignment more towards the right, I can just put this as 1. So it will move to the right. So make sure that the left, the first argument is x-axis and the second argument is y-axis. So this name will be on my right. And then if you want to be in the middle, you can put 0 0.5. So 1, you can think of it as the 100% width of the x-axis. So 0 0.5 is over here. So luckily my image is perfect in the middle because I'm pointing to my name. Perfect. Then I use column with a main axis size minimum. If I were to put maximum, let's see what it looks like. Then it means that it takes up the whole height of the current widget it is taking up space in. So that's why I put minimum because it will only occupy the space the children use. That's why I use main axis size minimum. Then at the same time, cross axis alignment dot start. If I don't do this and let's save this, it will look something like that. Meaning that the default is centering the text, which I don't think is nice over here. So that's why I put it on the start because then these two text widget will be pushed to this left margin. And then lastly, we have a very simple text on top of each other with just a spacing in the middle with with a sized box and I have my name over here and a description of what I'm doing. You can see here that our style is different. I've created these ver style variables called name style and description style. And over here, this name style basically means it uses the headline to default text and the description style takes in the headline for. Headline two means H2 and H4 in markdown text. So at the same time, I override it with the background color to be colors white. So what you can do is you can, you know, override it as green. And this is what it looks like. I use white because it looks nicer. And this is what I usually use inside my Instagram that you can follow at the Happy Harris. And that's about it. This is a very simple parallax tutorial. Hopefully you guys learn something new here. If you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this web portfolio, you can subscribe. Comment down below on what kind of effects you want to see creating a website. Anyway, if you are interested in building a very good Flutter developer portfolio so that you can be hired, then you can sign up in the link in the description. So that's about it. Stay safe and all the best. Bye-bye.